With maths, sadly, the last thing that springs to mind for so many is that it is a creative subject. After all, what has creativity got to do with long division, with factorising quadratics, or calculating compound interest? I'd like to begin with two quotations, the first from the mathematician turned school teacher Paul Lockhart, and the second from the great Cambridge mathematician G. H. Hardy. There is no question that if the world had to be divided into the poetic dreamers and the rational thinkers, most people would place the mathematicians in the latter category. Nevertheless, the fact is that there is nothing as dreamy and poetic, nothing as radical, subversive and psychedelic as mathematics, the purest of the arts, as well as the most misunderstood. A mathematician, like a painter or poet, is a maker of patterns. If his patterns are more permanent than theirs, it is because they are made with ideas. In this video, I want to give a taste of creative thinking in mathematics, a simple application with a pleasing visual result that also teaches us something about different types of numbers. So, in my view, maths is one of the most creative fields of human endeavour, in part because it's so easy to be creative. A sculptor might have to chisel away at a block of stone, a novelist must write draft after draft, the musician practices, records and produces, but the mathematician must only think of an idea or come up with new questions, and in some real way, the creative process is already done. This surprisingly uh, neat result that we'll go through teaches us something about shapes and numbers. We're all familiar with simple shapes like triangles, squares and pentagons and the rest, and you should know that these shapes are identified by the number of their sides, numbers like 3, 4 and 5, the whole numbers. But I think there are other types of numbers that you know about. Of course, there are many more numbers than just the whole numbers, the integers. There are numbers like 3.5, also known as 3.5. If we tried to think like a creative mathematician, we might ask ourselves the question, if there are shapes with three sides and there are shapes with four sides, are there shapes with three and a half sides? Well, you might think that that is a stupid question. After all, isn't half a side just a shorter side, or a side that only goes halfway and doesn't connect up the shape? Well, this is where the creative process really kicks in. We've struck upon an idea, and it feels maybe a bit stupid, but also like it might lead somewhere new. Let's use our creativity and imagine what this shape with 3.5 sides might be like. So. The sides should be straight sides, there should be straight lines. It should be quantifiably halfway between a square and a triangle. And the end point of the line must join up with the start point, otherwise it wouldn't be a closed shape. Now that we've had the creative idea that in some way this shape is halfway between a square and a triangle, let's see what we know about the simple shapes aside from their side length. We know their exterior angles. The outer angles that you turn by at each corner. A regular triangle has an exterior angle of 120 degrees and a square 90. So we can ask ourselves, what is halfway between these two? Well, it's 105 degrees. Let's see what happens when we begin to construct a shape that turns 105 degrees at each corner. At first, it seems like a disaster. The two ends don't meet. But if we persevere in drawing them, after many turns, it does actually join back up with itself. We found the answer to what's halfway between a square and a triangle. And it's this rather impressive shape with 24 corners, straight sides, and a start point identical to its end point. I don't think it's at all obvious that the shape halfway between a square and a triangle should have 24 sides and on top of that look rather appealing and interesting. All this came from asking a creative, silly question that shouldn't really have an answer. In return for our creativity, what did we receive? Well, we've got a cool shape, a curious problem to solve. After all, what has 24 got to do with being halfway between 3 and 4? We've also discovered something maybe even deeper. Seeing that there are an infinite number of fractions between two integers, in some way, most regular shapes actually look like this one. And it just so happens that the shapes we're familiar with, such as triangles, squares, pentagons, are just the simplest examples of this. This also gives us a new way of visualising rational numbers, aka the fractions. 
So this uh, this exterior angle is 105 degrees, which is 7 twentieths of a turn. So this uh, this picture has something to do with rational number, the rational number 7 over 20. In maths, asking questions and making loops based on creativity, intuition, curiosity and a desire to play are the essence of the subject. And I for one think that it's a shame that these points are not emphasised more. So I'll leave you with some problems to answer in the comments below if you're interested. So first, why does this shape have 24 sides and corners? Does this make this, this shape a form of icosahedron, a 24-sided shape? And if these are both 24-sided shapes, are there any other regular shapes with 24 sides? Are there other shapes between triangles and squares? And if so, how many? How many sides does the shape halfway between a square and a pentagon have? And are there any other shapes between a triangle and a square with fewer than 24 sides and of course don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you for watching and listening